audio jungle. Everyone needs to communicate. We may speak, send a letter, call a friend, use the internet. These are all different forms of communication. But how does a phone or internet connection work? Well, nowadays almost everything is wired with optical fiber. These connections allow us to connect the whole world and transmit that at very, very high speed. How? Using the properties of light. For example, laser beams with different wavelengths each one carrying different information may be transmitted in the same fiber or channel all at the same time. When they arrive at the receptor, they can be separated from one another, recovering the information contained in each one without any losses. These processes are called multiplexing and demultiplexing, respectively. They are possible because beams with different wavelengths don't interfere. And this is a key point. Beams that may be sent in the same channel without interfering are said to be orthogonal and are very important in communications. Using techniques like this, we may also use time or space to multiplex signals. Moreover, we may use light properties such as phase or amplitude to encode information into light and transmit huge amounts of it. However, optical communications are reaching a limit and increasing information flux has become a really hard task. Why? Well, we are running out of degrees of freedom to encode information in light and multiplex it. We have already used wavelength, the phase, amplitude, time, space, polarization, well, everything. The world is asking for communication with greater capacity, but we don't have any more options. Is the future ruined? Isn't there any solution? Well, of course there is. It's called Orbital Angular Momentum, or OAM. Orbital Angular Momentum is a light property that describes the helical phase pattern of a wavefront. In simple words, OAM tells us that the degree of twist of a beam. But how do I know how twisted is a light beam? The amplitude of these beams has this expression, but we don't need all of this. Let's look only to the small phase, which depends on the azimuthal coordinate phi. This phase generates the orbital angular momentum. The L is an integer number which quantifies the amount of orbital angular momentum of each photon of the laser beam. Visually, it indicates the number of helices in a wavefront that the wavefront has. So, if L equals 0, we have no helices and thus no OAM. With L equal 1, we have a beam like this. With L equal 2, we have a beam like this. And with L equal 3, we even have a Fusilli-like beam. So, we have unlimited values for it. Moreover, it also can have negative values. They mean exactly the same, but the rotation of the wavefront is made in the opposite direction. Okay, stop. This is all very interesting and fascinating, but how is it useful to optical communications? Right. Back to communications. The big advantage of OEM is that beams with a different L value don't interfere with each other. They are orthogonal, which is perfect for communications. With OEM, we have another degree of freedom to carry information. Moreover, we have unlimited L values which allows us to multiplex as many beams as we want. The question is, how to do this? Well, in my work, I will generate many beams with no OAM and then, using a device called a Spatial Light Modulator, I will modulate their phase and amplitude to convert them into beams carrying OAM. After that, I will investigate how to multiplex and demultiplex these beams so that I can transmit information with them. I'm John Sabine and I will complete my master's degree in engineering physics by studying the orbital angular momentum of photons. Thank you. Audio Jungle.